Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to week 12, lecture 60. From today, we will be start discussing about the component matching and testing. So in last week, we were discussing about the TurboSoft engine, where we have introduced the TurboSoft engines, advantages and challenges of TurboSoft engines. Then we have discussed about the various applications for the TurboSoft engine. We have realized these engines, they are having wide range of application. That's what is starting from helicopter towards the naval application, even for the power generation purpose. Then we have done the thermal cycle analysis for the single and two spool turbo shaft engine. We also have discussed about the profan engines because they are the future engines and that need to be having say more focus on such kind of thermal cycle analysis. So in order to build a confidence in all of us, we need to go with the thermal cycle analysis for the probe fan also. In last week, we were discussing about say aircraft engine operation, which is in terms of say requirements of the subsonic aircraft schedule. And we have solved the numerical also for that. From today, we will be discussing about say component matching and engine testing where we will be discussing about the engine performance at various flight segments. Then we will try to start discussing about say single spool turbojet engine component matching, where we will be matching component individually. That's what is starting from intake and compressor matching, compressor and combustion chamber matching, combustion chamber turbine matching, pumping characteristic, we will be discussing about the design point matching of turbine and nozzle as well as we will be discussing about the variable geometry nozzle performance at of design condition, engine of design analysis and finally we will be concluding our whole subject with the engine performance testing. So let's start with say very first what all we need to understand in terms of our component matching. Now in order to realize the importance of component matching, very first thing we need to know is what is the kind of operation we are performing with this engine. So here in this case, if we look at say the aircraft, that's what is going through different operations. That's what is starting from start off, taxi out, take off, climb, cruise, descend, then landing or we can say then later on at the end stage we have our shutdown. So here in this case if we try to analyze what is the importance of the engine mainly with say aircraft because we are focusing more on engine. So our requirement is to lift up the aircraft and that's what is required the maximum amount of thrust. And that condition we have considered as a takeoff condition or in our conversation we have taken that as a design condition. Then after, after having say lift off of the aircraft we are taking the benefit of lift that's what will be generated by the wing and that's how we are climbing towards the altitude. Once we will reach to a certain altitude we will be having the cruise condition. That's what we say my aircraft will be flying at constant say Mach number at constant altitude and as per the requirement we will be having descent and landing of the aircraft. This is what we are discussing about say commercial aircraft. In line to that in last week we have discussed about the operation for the military aircraft. 
there we are having special kind of requirement that's what is for say different purpose suppose say we are considering we have to perform the operation in terms of say defense action where we will be having operation in terms of cruise out cruise back loiter and bait drop similarly we have discussed in terms of air superiority operations where we will be having say combat kind of operation that's what will be coming into the picture so in overall if we look at our engine is not working at design condition it is working in design condition for some instant and later part for almost all operation that's what is working not under design condition what we say as a of design condition so when we are designing our engine aircraft engine gas turbine engine for that we need to do the cycle analysis in terms of checking or assessing the performance of that engine both in terms of design as well as of design condition suppose if we consider our aircraft that's what is not generating sufficient amount of thrust for the take off then this engine is of no use so we need to be very careful in terms of the selection of or say design point for the selection of this engine okay now let's look at here this is what we have discussed even in last lecture where we were discussing about say the requirement of the thrust under different operations or different flight regimes where we have discussed maximum thrust that's what is our take off thrust during the climb the maximum thrust requirement that's what will be reducing during the cruise condition the thrust requirement is minimum for doing the maneuvers for military aircraft we are looking for variable thrust for acceleration deceleration that also required say variable thrust and for descent we are looking for lower thrust for landing operation the thrust requirement that's what is less than that of the maximum thrust that means my engine again that need to work under all these operations that need to work under all these flight regimes okay so let's try to discuss here this we have discussed in last lecture where we have our take off condition where my net thrust or say take off thrust that's what is equal we can say that's what is the highest thrust condition then we have realized in order to move from say take off condition to certain altitude because we are looking for say fuel economy under that condition our aircraft that need to fly at the altitude where the thrust requirement or the power requirement by the engine that's what will be reducing with and this path that's what is representing climb to cruise condition this we have already discussed in the last session maybe if you want you can just revise with this part similarly we have discussed in terms of say specific fuel consumption so again let me put the point here our thrust specific fuel consumption that's what we are defining in terms of say amount of fuel consumed or m dot f divided by thrust so here in this case if we consider the take off condition for that my thrust will be maximum so if we consider that as a condition my thrust specific fuel consumption that's what will be coming to be lower now when we are flying at certain altitude under cruise condition that may be in the range of mark 0.8 0.85 during that we have seen our thrust generation that's what will be lower at the same time in order to generate that thrust the amount of fuel requirement also will be lower so that's the reason here if we consider when we are comparing our take off condition and cruise condition it says during the cruise condition the specific fuel consumption that's what is going to be higher and this higher we need to realize it is in terms of the operation suppose if i consider say take off condition we have discussed that will be for say 2 to say 5 seconds and for the cruise condition that will be flying for hours suppose if i consider say most modern flying aircraft 
they are flying for say 10 to 15 hours continuously so under that condition my fuel consumption will be higher no doubt we are more targeting towards say reducing the amount of fuel consumption during the cruise condition because our requirement is in terms of say fuel economy our requirement is in terms of range of the aircraft and this is equally applicable people they are thinking these days in terms of military aircraft also for the fuel economy configuration so it's not the case say till now we were discussing for a military aircraft the fuel economy is of not major concern but the recent development it says like they are also targeting the fuel economic say engines now if we consider here this is what is representing a different kind of thought process so here if we look at these lines these parallel lines they are representing say turbine entry temperature and these horizontal lines they are representing say mark number so here if we look at x axis that's what is representing the thrust y axis that's what is representing the specific fuel consumption so somewhere here we are having maximum cruise condition limit and we have maximum climb condition limit that's what is being put with so if we look at here say when we are increasing our turbine entry temperature it says our specific fuel consumption for different mach number that's what is varying with okay so when we are flying at lower mach number we will be having the specific fuel consumption to be higher with the higher turbine entry temperature but when we are moving with say mach number to be higher the with increase of turbine entry temperature the specific fuel consumption that's what will be going to be lower so we know what we are looking for is in terms of maximum amount of thrust so let me put the point here we can say this is what is our design condition or maximum thrust condition where we can say this is near to our say maximum turbine entry temperature condition as well as this mark number that's what will be near to say maybe 0.1 or say 0 so this point that's what is representing our design condition the purpose here is we want maximum amount of thrust that need to be generated and it says with higher turbine entry temperature we will be having the maximum amount of thrust that can be generated by the engine now when we are flying at altitude so that condition we will say is here suppose if we consider say my flying mark number it is say 0.85 so this represents say cruise condition so under that condition if we look at it says my thrust requirement that's what is going to be lower at the same time the turbine entry temperature that is also going to be lower but for that the specific fuel consumption is going to be higher under that condition so if you recall in last week we were discussing what all numericals we have solved with where we have considered the compression ratio turbine entry temperature mass flow rate that's what we have assumed to be same as a ground condition so we must realize here when we are considering say flying condition or the cruise condition under that configuration the requirement for the turbine entry temperature requirement for the mass flow rate that's what will be going to be changed suppose if we consider this downside plot that's what is representing the rotational speed of hp spool so here in this case again if we consider we are looking for our design condition here what it says it says like we need to move with the higher rotational speed of the hp spool because our thrust requirement is higher but when we are flying at the altitude under that condition we will be having the rotational speed of the hp spool that's what will be different and it says it's say our specific fuel consumption is going to be higher under this condition so now let's try to understand what is the meaning of that so it says like my turbine entry temperature that is what is one of the key parameter second that's what is what will be the rotational speed of my engine that also is a key parameter in terms of the operation for the engine 
both for design condition as well as for the cruise condition. And that's what is basically impacting on our specific fuel consumption. So let's try to look at how do we go forward with. So here if we look at this is what is representing our single spool turbojet engine. In order to simplify the problem, in order to understand this matching to be in a simplest way, we will be considering first with the single spool configuration. So that will not generate the confusion in a later part. So here for this engine, what we say, what are our expectations from this engine? We say we are expecting say thrust. Suppose if I consider this is single spool turbo soft engine or turbo probe engine, there our Moser focus that's what is with the power generation. Now under this condition what we say, we are looking for the thrust to be maximum with the best possible efficiency of the engine. Okay. Now, in order to have this, in order to have this engine, we are looking for say design configuration. We need to decide with the parameters of this cycle. And in order to decide these parameters, we say this is basically our initial point or design point. Remember one thing, when we say design point, it's a single point. We cannot design any component, any device for multiple points. Design points what will be say, for the single point. Now when we say design point, what all are our parameter? Our required parameters are say overall pressure ratio of the compressor, mass flow rate, turbine entry temperature, rotational speed as well as we have discussed, we are also interested in what will be the efficiencies of different components isentropic efficiency of these components and that's what will be giving us the initial idea about the design point and this design point we say that's what is the maximum thrust point or the maximum power point okay so in order to do that let's look at what is our requirement so very first thing for our cycle analysis is to decide with the pressure ratio with the maximum turbine entry temperature which will give the highest overall efficiency or we can say that's what is giving the desired power or the trust. So this is what is our primary requirement. From this primary requirement, we will be deciding our important parameters for the cycle. Once we are decided with this, we will be having our design point and that's what will be giving the idea about the speed it will be giving the idea about the pressure ratio, mass flow rate for different components and then we will start with designing each component of this engine. Okay. Now when we are saying design, say this all components that's what is making this engine that will be working absolutely fine under design condition. But that's not the only case because we have realized the engine will be working under design condition only during the takeoff. And during all other operations, all our flight envelope, the engine will be working under off design condition. So we need to check with what all are the range of the speed and what all are the power settings that's what is required in order to work this engine absolutely fine even under off design condition. Okay, so let's move with say aircraft breed breeding engine. When we say when it is working under off design condition, this off design conditions are because of following reasons. Very first we can say altitude of flight and that's what is you know non-standard ambient pressure and temperature. So if we consider when we are doing our design, we have configured our engine, we are designing our engine at sea level because that's where we are looking for maximum amount of thrust. But what is happening when it is flying at the altitude, it will be having say variation because of seasonal effect or because of say arctic flights. Second parameter that's what is flight Mach number. So if we look at during takeoff, climb, cruise, dash, say approach, landing, 
they all are happening or we are having our aircraft that's what is flying at different flight Mach numbers so my conditions to the engine entry conditions exit conditions to the engine that's what will be different for say different operations the next component we have that's what is our total setting basically that's what is related with the turbine entry temperature very soon we will realize what we mean by throttling okay next we have is afterburner setting we say we want to have suppose we have our engine that's what is fitted with the afterburner but we don't want to operate the afterburner then for certain instance we want to have say afterburner to be operational or maybe we need to have the partial setting so all this will bring the engine to be working under off design condition because we have designed this engine with afterburner kind of configuration now when our afterburner is non operational that's what we say it's a say off design condition operation similarly the nozzle area ratio so we have discussed about the variable area nozzle that's what is very important in order to verify or in order to meet the specific requirement for say optimize installation stall okay installation thrust so in order to understand the performance of the engine we need to discuss in terms of matching of this each components as well as the whole aircraft operation under off design and design condition that need to be understood clearly here now when we say the operation that is off design operation and when we are discussing about the matching then there are different terminologies which over the year engineers researchers they have incorporated with and it says matching is in terms of different requirements so very first it says mass flow matching between all engine components so we must match all the components for say special mass flow rate configuration next that's what is say energy or the work matching between the components so we can say my turbine need to generate sufficient amount of power in order to rotate the compressor not only to rotate the compressor but it should generate the sufficient amount of pressure ratio such that at the entry of the combustion chamber we will be having sufficient pressure as well as temperature so that's where the work matching that's what will be coming into the picture we have our rotational component and that's what is defined in terms of mechanical matching so this mechanical matching is basically rotational speed of compressor as well as the turbine sometimes people they used to define in terms of geometrical matching of these components and the interfaces so what all are the dimensions of intake compressor section say combustion chamber section turbine section say uh, tailpipe nozzle these all components then also need to match in terms of geometrical requirement so we will be realizing this very soon in that sense not only these four points but at individual sub, sub component matching of the compressor and turbine is also equally important when it is working in terms of say instability when it is working under off design condition this off design condition may not be because of the operation or may not be because of the flight or the altitude or say flying mark number that may be because of worst case scenario that's what will be happening during the operation so we will be discussing all this in detail over this week now let's see so here we are looking for say any kind of engine very first requirement is to focus on the conservation of mass and conservation of energy that's what is to match the components we can say the satisfaction of conservation of mass that's what is required if we are talking about the turbine then we know the air which is entering from the compressor that's what will be getting added up with the fuel in combustion chamber so when we are having that as a configuration under that condition the continuity need to be satisfied with 
at the same time the exhaust nozzle flow characteristic also need to be satisfied with so here we can say this nozzle that's what is we we, we have discussed it's a chalk nozzle say unchalk nozzle when we say it's a chalk nozzle that's what is a maximum mass flow rate condition so that's the reason why this conservation of mass is playing very important role Similarly, when we say satisfaction of the conservation of the energy, then we need to have this turbine to generate sufficient amount of power in order to rotate the compressor. And you know, that's what will be varying with the kind of engine. Suppose if you are talking about turbojet engine, if you are talking about the turbofan engine, there the requirement from the turbine, that's what is only to rotate the compressor. We have discussed about the kind of engines, say turbo probe engine, turbo shaft engine, where additional amount of power that need to be generated in order to rotate the propeller or in order to rotate the helicopter rotors. Now, if we consider say atomic spaces, so combustion we have discussed in our second week, where the chemical composition of this uh, uh, fuel, that's what is playing important role. And that's what will be affecting the expansion process which is happening inside the turbine. So energy conservation is also equally important. And the third component that we say is a momentum conservation. We know this momentum conservation that's what is very important because our major focus is for the thrust generation by the engine. So now let's look at how do we start with solving the component matching. So in order to move forward, very first thing requirement is to go with the component performance map. So each component they are having their performance map and that's what is basically been defined in terms of corrected parameters. So we say corrected parameters are corrected mass flow rate, corrected speed, corrected fuel flow, corrected thrust, corrected specific fuel consumption. So let's look at what is the meaning of that. So here in this case, if you recall in very first week, we have discussed about say standard, say standard atmospheric condition. And that's where we have taken our reference pressure as 101.33 kilopascal and temperature as 288.2 Kelvin. So in order to compare the performance of the engine, we are basically taking this as a reference and that reference parameter we are putting in terms of say pressure at particular location divided by reference pressure, temperature at particular location divided by reference temperature and that's what is defined in terms of say pressure ratio and temperature ratio that is as a delta x and theta x. So let's try to put that in terms of say corrected mass flow rate. So this corrected mass flow rate, it is given in terms of m dot x divided by theta divided by delta. So based on our understanding from our continuity equation, that can be represented in terms of area into velocity. And this area into velocity, that's what we are representing in terms, in terms of area and the Mach number. Next parameter we have is a corrected speed. The speed, that's what has been corrected in terms of n divided by square root of theta. Same way corrected fuel flow rate, it is given in terms of m dot f divided by uh, square root of theta 2 into delta 2. Corrected thrust, it is given by f divided by delta infinity. Corrected specific fuel consumption, that's what has been corrected in terms of say the square root of theta infinity. Same way we can put corrected specific fuel consumption in terms of pi d into m dot f divided by corrected thrust. So this is what we can say this is taking care of variation of temperature and the pressure. So if you recall we have discussed this point earlier. Suppose say when I am designing my engine here in India. Suppose someone is designing the engine in say western region where the temperature and pressure that's what is say lower. So what thrust that engine will be generating and what thrust here in India it will be generating that will come to be different. So in order to avoid that kind of conflict people they are 
putting the performance map of each component in terms of corrected form. Be careful, there is a difference in terms of non-dimensional form and normalized form. So here in this case, this is what we are putting in terms of non-dimensional form. So let's look at here. So this is what is our say component. It says inlet and uh, compressor matching. So here in this case, if we put this is our say entry condition A infinity, P infinity, temperature and M infinity. Same way here somewhere we are having the lip. It is having area A1. My engine phase or at the entry of the compressor, we have area that's what is given by A2. So at this moment, we are focusing on this component. That's what is inlet and say compressor. How do we match these components? So here, if we look at, we are having say variable properties. These properties are A infinity. We know this A infinity, that's what is varying with the change of flying Mach number. Okay, so here A infinity, we say it is depending on flying Mach number or the flight condition. We say takeoff condition, climb condition, cruise condition. This parameter say temperature and pressure, basically that's what is also been affected by the flight Mach number and that for it is affecting the total property. So here in this case, if we look at the higher the flying Mach number, we will be having P01 and T01 at any altitude that's what is say remains constant because we are considering our flow to be isentropic flow and under that condition our P01 and T01 at the lift phase that's what will be say changing that is decrease with the increase of altitude and vice versa. So let's try to write down the equation at the entry so mass flow rate that's what we can represent in terms of this formula that is nothing but our continuity equation it says density into area into velocity suppose if i'll be writing my condition at the inlet so it says my m infinity condition so here at the free stream condition this mass flow rate that is represented in terms of a infinity m infinity p0 infinity and t0 infinity so those who are facing difficulty in terms of this formula you can go through the basic book that is talking about the isentropic flow and say gas dynamics book that's what will be giving you the idea about from where this equation is coming will not be spending the time in terms of deriving this equation at this moment okay now let me put the equation at the station 2. At the station 2 we can write down this is represented in terms of P02 over T02. Area is A2. This is representing my Mach number MZ2. So now let's try to understand suppose if I consider as per our continuity equation it says my mass flow rate at the entry as well as at the phase of the my compressor they both need to be same we have our conservation of energy that need to be satisfied if we consider for the intake we have discussed my total temperature that's what will be remains constant so if this is the case we can write down our p02 by root square root t01 here this is what is been simplified with this equation if this is the case and if we are arranging that, we can say we will be getting this equation. So let's try to look at this equation. Here this P02 by P0 infinity, that's what we are writing in terms of say, this is our total pressure recovery factor. This will be our area ratio. And here in this case, if you look at the right hand side of this equation, that's what we can get the solution easily if we know what is our flying Mach number. So under this equation, if we look at carefully, on the left hand side, we are not having any information about say inlet total pressure recovery. We are not having any information about what will be the area and we are not having information about what will be the Mach number, axial entry Mach number at the compressor. Okay, 
Now the question is how do we solve this equation? How do we get the information about that? So let's look at what to do for that. It says my inlet total pressure recovery as per the standard reference. There are standard reference which are available in open literature where people they are using this for the solving and it says my total pressure recovery factor that's what is a function of the flight Mach number. So for different Mach number configuration this is what is our consideration. So we can say when I am talking about the subsonic flight we are having this as an equation when we are talking about the supersonic flight there we are having this equation. So it says the mass and energy balance for this inlet compressor we have two unknowns one it is in terms of say what is our m a area or free stream area and second that's what is in terms of say mark number for any flight condition so we have two unknowns in this configuration so when we say when we are discussing the matching between inlet and this compressor we need to also focus on say what is the inlet distortion so let me put the point here you must have gone through the basic courses in propulsion when we say distortion it's a special kind of configuration we can say our engine it has been designed for say the inflow to go parallel to the engine axis suppose if we are considering it is say takeoff or say landing under that condition the flow which is going inside the engine is not parallel so some of the region that's what will be finding the air to be going inside so that's what will lead to reduce the air going inside the engine and that's what is creating the trouble that's what we are defining in terms of stall or the surge so we need to be very careful in terms of what all are the inflow conditions so in overall what we are discussing is let's see it says due to flying condition at any mark number the main configuration that is coming is in terms of ram pressure that's what is developed at the inlet it may increase or decrease the compressor inlet condition or it will be changing the compressor outlet pressure it will increase or decrease the turbine entry temperature or say outlet pressure and that's what will be affecting the next component that's what is for the nozzle it will be increasing or decreasing based on what is my configuration at the entry we have seen for the high nozzle pressure ratio my flow that need to be chalk it says my nozzle pressure ratio that's what is it, it is fixed for the flying mark condition so for the fixed turbine operating condition the nozzle that's what is always working under chalk condition so if you recall again and again we have discussed say the aircraft engine that's what is being designed mainly these nozzles they are being designed they are about to work under chalk condition during all flight conditions so here what we want to discuss in sense it says like in order to have the maximum amount of thrust that need to be generated my nozzle that need to be work under chalk condition same way here in this case we have discussed the inlet what we are not considering in the discussion for the cycle analysis that's what is playing important role so if you recall in last lecture we have done the discussion about the components what is happening with so under that condition it says when we are flying at certain altitude with certain mark number that's what will be affecting our inflow condition to the compressor outflow condition of the compressor inflow condition to the turbine similarly that's what will be affecting the inflow and outflow condition for the nozzle so this is what is sufficient for today's discussion here we are stopping with the discussion for the matching for inlet and the compressor i'm sure you will be having a clear clarity about how the component matching that's what has been done with what matching we are discussing at this moment 
it is in terms of say thermodynamic matching thank you thank you very much